It's exciting to see young volunteers. After all, in the future, these parks will need new caretakers. Hopefully, with smart planning, this urban oasis will continue to thrive. Forests come in such amazing diversity, deciduous, coniferous, rainforests. They are one of the most spectacular living systems on our planet, covering 30% of Earth. It was amazing to start things out in New Hampshire and learn how invasive species are even affecting forests. That vine that was literally choking off those trees. And then, of course, the UC Santa Cruz, that sonic tomography. How fascinating to be able to create an ultrasound image in 30 minutes of the inside of that tree. That advancement in technology is helping us be able to predict the health of forests in ways never before imagined. And then, of course, urban landscapes, forest landscapes in cities like here in Los Angeles remind us of the power of green places to help rejuvenate a city. They bring incredible benefits to local populations. And those urban landscapes prove that no matter where they're found, forests are vital parts. With Dom Izzo. Really? Really, Dom? No. I like what Dom's doing. Okay. Dom Izzo. Jeez. Come on, Dom. What do you think I am, a magician? Yeah, I'm fired up, Dom. What else could I say? Absolutely. I was great to get on the field and then Dom came up to me and I'm trying to walk away from me. I just wanted to enjoy myself out there. Hot mic. Great job. <laughs> There's got to be some kind of intelligent question about something. Is a hot, hot mic hot mic on the networks of WDAY? You know, if it's not about sports, I find it very hard to concentrate. Here's Dom Izzo. Dom Izzo. Good Friday morning. This is We've Made It to the End of the Week edition of Hot Mic on WDAY Extra. KSFL TV in Sioux Falls at Inforum.com and Sioux Falls Live. Good morning, everybody. We made it to the end of the week. Weather going to turn as the day goes. Seems like the smoke is out of here, thankfully. And we've got a dynamite weekend on tap right on time. First time a little bit. Last couple weekends, it's been... Uh, Dodge and raindrops, but hopefully we're not going to do that here uh, this weekend. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. I am Dom Izzo, host of our program. Welcome to Hot Mike on a busy Friday as we're anticipating a big-time weekend. Excited about what we have uh, on tap. Whether uh, you're a sporting fan or not, just nice to be able to get outside. Uh, tomorrow, the Fargo Marathon set to take place here in town. I know everyone is ex excited about that, and there should be a great uh, running day tomorrow. Uh, for the brave runners that are going to get out there. I don't say that lightly. It is a, it is not something, uh, at least I take lightly, for those that are going to go and do it, uh, having run the 5K for a handful of times. And I won't be able to do it tonight. I'll be across the street, but uh, we'll be cheering everybody on and excited to see what uh, happens over the next couple days. So the 5K tonight, then, of course, the uh, half marathon coming up. Uh, tomorrow, the 10K and the full marathon. And uh, you'll be able to stream that. Inform.com will have all your coverage there. Excited to uh, to see what's coming up uh, over the next couple days as uh, the streets of Fargo and Moorhead will be filled with runners. And as I mentioned, the weather looks like it's going to be dynamite for uh, that. we got the Twins coming up tonight. So uh, late night again for you Twins fans as they'll open up a series with the Angels after a day off yesterday. And uh, we'll see there will be... I would imagine a bunch of roster moves, either when we're on the air today or um, before the game tonight, after the injuries that happened with Gallo, Polanco, and Gordon, uh, as we talked about on the show yesterday, the Twins are going to have to make some moves. So we'll uh, update you on that as uh, the show goes, if events warrant there. Uh, the PGA Championship is continuing. We'll update you on that shortly. The second round from Oak Hill, Tom Hoagie will play later this morning. Uh, he's going to need to make some birdies if he wants to play the weekend. A very tough golf course at Oak Hill and Rochester, and uh, we'll show you that coming up in just a little bit. If you uh, missed it last night, we uh, showed you game one of the three-game set between South Dakota State and North Dakota State up at Newman Outdoor Field. Final weekend of the regular season as it is in the Summit League and across college baseball. NDSU needs just one win 
to clinch the second seed. The Jacks need to sweep the Bison to move past them. Parker Pitts was great last night. Freshman from Volga, South Dakota, was basically almost perfect through the first five innings of this game as the Jackrabbits could not touch him through the first five. The Bison built a 4 nothing lead as Drew Sackett connects here with his 13th home run of the season to make it a 4 nothing game. But the Jacks would rally in the top of the sixth inning off Wyatt Nelson. It was a 4-2 game, now 4-3, when this Luke Ira single through the left side would score Reese Anderson, or Tyler Coles, excuse me, and ties it up at four. Later in the inning, this opposite field double would be the fifth run of the inning to make it a 5-4 game. It be 6-5 now in the bottom of the ninth. West Fargo's Ryan Barasa was fantastic. He struck out the side for the Jackrabbits in the bottom of the ninth, and SDSU comes all the way back and beats NDSU 6-5. Barasa goes an inning a third to get the save. In a game, the Bison held a 4-0 lead going into the sixth inning and saw it all evaporate with SDSU scoring five in the top half of the sixth inning and takes the opening game, evens up the season series here at two apiece with two more to come, including tonight's game that you'll see here on Extra. These are the up-to-date standings now in the league. Oral Roberts with a win yesterday over Western Illinois, now two wins away from going through the league with just one conference loss. The Bison still hold second. Again, all they need is one win to take the second seed. We already know, as we mentioned during the broadcast yesterday, these two teams are going to play one another in the uh, opening game of the tournament next week. Meanwhile, the race for third keeps getting cloudier here is Omaha, a half game up on Western. Northern Colorado won, though, yesterday. And then you see St. Thomas has already wrapped up league play. They're playing non-conference games this weekend to wrap up the regular season. So there's still some debate on uh, who can be the fourth seed? I can't even figure it out yet. It, there's too much <laughs> permutations on that. But uh, on the Bison side of things, they need a victory. And uh, they'll get the two seed. They'll send West Fargo's Tristan Rorich to the mound tonight. And again, we'll have that game for you coming up 630 uh, here on WDAY Extra. Now, the fun part about how crazy the game was last night um, in hockey is because Literally, I was gone for whatever it was, three and a half hours for the baseball game. And by the time we got home, you still could have watched four hours of hockey last night because that's what Carolina and Florida did in the opening game of the Eastern Conference Finals in Raleigh. Game one last night, Panthers and Hurricanes, traditional rivals, not sure on that, but they played a whale of a game. In fact, the sixth longest game in the history of of the National Hockey League. It's a 2-1 Florida lead in the third period when the Hurricanes tie it on a nifty pass there, and we play overtime. Now, Florida thinks they've won the game here on a turnaround shot, but we go to video review because, watch, in the crease, they interfere with a goaltender, which is going to be waved off and means the game isn't over yet. And it means we're going to play and we're going to play and we're going to play some more hurricanes get an overtime power play that almost won the game. Watch again, clinks off the top of the pipe and we play on. Yeah. I wouldn't blame you if you passed out. We're in the third overtime. Now chance here down low. What a fantastic save there on the backhand chance by Frederick Anderson to keep this game going on. Again, a look at that. Anderson with a dynamic pad save here. We play on into the fourth overtime now, and we're almost done with it. Dying seconds of the overtime. Matthew Kachuk gets open and wrists it home and wins it for the Florida Panthers with 10 seconds remaining in the fourth overtime. Florida beats Carolina. 3-2 to two to take the opening game at 1947 of the fourth overtime. We were 13 seconds away from heading to a fifth OT. It ends, as I mentioned, the sixth longest game in the history 
of the National Hockey League, and they got to come back and play again tomorrow night. The only games longer, the Red Wings and the Maroons back in 1936 played six overtimes. Maple Leafs Bruins played six OTs in 1933. The Flyers and Penguins played five. I remember this one, May 4th, 2000, right during finals week. Wasn't getting any studying done because I was watching the end of the Flyers-Penguins game as they played five OTs. The Lightning and the Blue Jackets just did it in the bubble. August of 2020, they played five overtimes, 90 minutes, 27 seconds. The Ducks and the Stars in 2003 played a five-overtime game. And then last night, four overtimes, 79 minutes and 47 seconds. Those are the kind of games you get people watching just because now they want to see it end. And that was me last night. I was fading uh, after 1130. But uh, Florida wins it, and they steal home ice. And the Panthers now, this is a remarkable streak they've got going here. They have won, I think it's now six consecutive or seven consecutive road postseason games. Because, of course, they won uh, the two games in Boston that they had to win. Games five and seven. They won games one, two, and five in Toronto, and now game one uh, in Carolina. Again, team that finished eighth in the Eastern Conference and now three games away from going to the Stanley Cup final. Game one of the West Finals is tonight on ESPN with Dallas and Vegas as they'll open up that series in uh, in Vegas tonight at about 8.30. Lastly, before we wrap up our opening segment, set up a busy show. We got a lot going on. Uh, today we mentioned the PGA Championship underway at Oak Hill Country Club just outside of Rochester. Fargo's Tom Hoagie finished in the top 10 last year at Southern Hills in Tulsa. So again, looking to build off of that. Came in, he shot four rounds in the 60s last week at the Byron Nelson. But yesterday his driver betrayed him. He was all over the place. This was his second shot at the 14th, went ended up parring that hole. Here is he shot at the par 3 15th. This goes way wide of the green. That's just, you can't put it there, especially where the pin placement was. He would end up bogeying that hole. He shot four over on the front nine, made a couple of birdies on the backside, but then gave it back with bogeys at 15 and at 16. He went up parring here. That was his tee shot at 18. Shot an opening round of 74. At one point, he was tied for 90th. But uh, the scores have gone up, so he has improved where his uh, where he's sitting right now, which is currently in a tie for 74th. The top 70 and ties make the weekend, so he's going to have to do something, knowing full well that the golf course is probably going to get uh, even more difficult as the round goes. So if he, he stays steady, maybe gets a one under par, he's likely in for the weekend, which... Um, Obviously, you want to do, but I know he wants to be in contention. But the way his driver was, you're not gonna you're not gonna play four rounds at a major championship if you're not in the fairway. So he'll go off today. Uh, shortly before noon is when he'll begin his second round at Oak Hill Country Club, and we'll update that uh, tonight in our news at six and at ten. Real quick, again, one other thing, wanted to get him. Uh, Grant Nelson wrapped up uh, playing yesterday at the NBA Combine. Had one basket. Made five free throws yesterday. So it was another quiet day offensively. Again, we hammered this point home when we started the the week on this, is that the games were going to highly dictate whether he stays in the draft or returns to college. Um, what we saw was not not a ton offensively. He had a dunk yesterday, which... Uh, was different than what he did on Wednesday where he shot a majority. All all but one of his shots were three-pointers in the game on uh, on Wednesday. He's still got meetings set up here with nine NBA teams before uh, now in May 31st, and there will be plenty to look over from how he played, how he tested, which was really good. His testing numbers went through the roof and will be – Interested to see now where this process goes. It was a good start, maybe an inconsistent time on the court, but that will be up to now uh, his representatives, him and his family, about what the next step is. 
uh, in the process. Busy show. We're a pack today. Drew Trafton will join us in just a few minutes. Uh, he couldn't do us uh, on Wednesday, but he made time for us today. So he'll join us coming up in just a few minutes. New guest to our show, Alec Lewis from The Athletic will join us at 935. He covers the Minnesota Vikings for The Athletic and will give us an update as the Vikes will start OTAs next week. Obviously, the trade of Zadarius Smith, the signing of Jordan Addison went down over the last seven days. There's still one more move to be made with Dalvin Cook. We'll talk with Alec about how the Vikes offseason has gone coming up at 935. At 10 o'clock, Dylan Geiser will join us. Uh, now associate women's basketball head coach for the North Dakota State women. He was promoted earlier this week. He's been on Jory Collins' staff since Jory was hired in uh, May of 2019. Uh, we'll talk to Dylan about the promotion, what that means, and where the offseason stands for the Bison women coming up at 10 o'clock. And at 1035, Logan Campbell will join us to wrap up the week. We'll get uh, her thoughts. She covered the game last night between the Bison and the Jackrabbits. And uh, what else is going on? Uh, sporting wise as we'll wrap up the week there uh, at 10 35 that and a heck of a lot more here on our show this morning we'll take a quick break hot mic is off and rolling we're back after this on wday extra ksfl tv and inforum.com
Vegas Seahawks, Sounders, and Mariners fan in the FM area, it's time for Views with Drew. How about him helping us out on a Friday? Well, you should be out of here for, for the weekend, here. man. What uh, you, there's no you know, weekend this weekend. <laughs> I, we've got the marathon. we got lots yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I was there's, talking there's about There's all that. sorts of stuff going on this weekend. What would take it for you to run a 10K half marathon? I'm marathon? training to run Are a 10K you? right now. Good for you. Yeah, yeah I'm up to... Uh, so I've, I've been tacking on like a half mile each week and I'm trying to do between three and four runs a week. Good and I'm like, you, at, I'm going to, I'm at the, so at the turn here tonight, today is my last four and a half mile run. And then tomorrow I'm doing a five. So we're, we're right. getting up there. I've never ran a 10 K before. Okay, The most I did is five. I, yeah, did, I've done, I did a five K. I've done five K. Seemed like I ran a. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I've ran, I think it once I've ran, Five miles is the most I've ever ran consecutively yep. you know, for soccer. Like just with, okay. like our, uh, in high school, our coach on Mondays would make us run five miles and then we'd practice. Um, but I've just never been into distance running before. But but the last like three or four months, I've really started to appreciate the discipline yeah, that goes right. into hey, it because you totally you know like I'm not I'm not in athlete shape. So you know it's it's like I'm not trying to run as you know, like a fast mile, I'm just trying to cover distance. Right. Yep. And, and like that takes discipline because you're not, you're trying not to hurt yourself and you're <laughs> trying to like develop form and get faster. And you know, all of those things that I think are, you know, it's, it's good. It's, it's a good activity. And I, I'm glad I'm I, starting to appreciate it more as I get older. And the years we broadcasted the marathon on that day, that it always is inspiring to see the, all the runners leave the dome, whether they're doing the Holy 10k, days, yeah. the half or the full. Yeah. Um, because I, I admire all of them to go and do that, whether they end up walking some of it or they run the whole freaking thing. Me uh, to too. me, it's it's really, really impressive. So impressive. And, and the community spirit behind a marathon. I don't, you know, Pretty good. Bar, yeah. Bargo's really exceptional at it, but other places I've been too, like people get into it and they, they like cheering people along and all of that. <laughs> like there's never a dull moment with the music no. and the the clapping along Everywhere, the way, yeah. the right signs. Out, right out it's here, just, right outside, the station is rocking because yeah. A Street is really, really cool. Yeah, so. it's it's something. And then the other, like, just absolutely insane thing, if you've never watched a marathon in person, and I know you've called a mm-hmm. few, but I did a couple of reports for us live on First News one year, and I think just one hit in the marathon itself. And I had never watched Elite Runners for a marathon. Mm. The pace at which they run by, like, I know, like, it's kind of like NASCAR in a sense because you just don't understand it unless you see See it. it. The speed just doesn't translate. It is the same in person for a marathon because those guys are sprinting. They're moving. Yep. And, like, I mean, I can't run that fast literally sprinting as they are just paced in their mile. And it is yeah. it is absolutely bonkers. And Colpac would, would track the miles as the as the race would go on. And we would get here, which is normally mile 17, mile yeah. 18, and they're still cracking off five and a half minutes, 520, 525. Like, holy cow, yeah. they are moving. They're booking. It doesn't look it on television for people to watch, or but when you see it, they are yeah. they're moving. Yeah, they're moving I mean, it, good. And they just, it's just they're in a rhythm. It is so impressive. Now I want to show you a piece of video from yesterday. Oh, okay. I don't know if this is impressive or not. You may have seen this from Let's the see. from the I, PGA Championship no, I, yesterday. No, I haven't seen it. Then uh, professional golfer Tom Kim uh, hit his ball a bit wayward. Is maybe the best way to say it. <laughs> and he went to go get it and fell in the mud. Look at his arms and his he's completely Look covered in. <laughs> is this guy living out like literally? Look at his pants. He literally fell in the mud. <laughs> You know that it's not just over the pants, too. Uh, oh, it's God. That, it's just terrible. That's got to be rough. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> what what hole was that, do you know? Uh, where, where that was? It was somewhere on the back nine yesterday. It, this went viral. Oh. I mean, literally, he... Poor guy. I mean, can you imagine finishing around after <laughs> that? And that's just, like, caking well, on there? The best or? part was, I don't... I think the pieces of, like, they show him literally taking his pants off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just do whatever he you know. Disappeared like he literally is gone. He went. Out <laughs> you like, need a little I, privacy. I have had this happen where I have tried to go get. I, I'm not losing any more balls. I am gonna. Yeah, I gonna am getting this get one. It. You know. <laughs> Look at that. The pants. Man. Oh man. Yeah. Look at that. That was his. The last three holes after he fell in the mud. He went even. Yeah. <laughs> 
Maybe you should try that. At, <laughs> maybe there's awesome. something to that. The ESPN interviewed him after the round, and he, he looked at his phone of how viral he went. He just lost it. That it, It's one thing, because golfers are so high strung and oh. very you know close to the vet i glad he yeah. had fun with that well i mean at that level you're talking about like windex and stuff yeah. you know what i mean like i mean like it's a, and then to be thinking about oh, being man. caked in yeah. mud you know and the way the weather was out there yesterday uh, like did it even dry yeah you know like i mean that would be worse i think like what what would be worse being like having like dry mud all over you and like uh, clods of dirt at that point like probably okay. impacting your swing <laughs> Or being like completely sopping wet and dealing with like I think I want the mud. I've been wet. Yeah. I do not like that. I would be okay with the like the mud under the fingernails. Yeah. And I would be all right. I, I think I could live with that more ah, than being soaking wet. That'd be weird. Yeah, I don't know. Like I don't I mean it clearly it worked for him. Oh the, man, that, poor that's, guy. That's crazy. That's just, I wanted to make sure we saw that. Because it was blowing up my phone last you night. Be like, I mean, you you game, make so. your professional golfer at that oh, point. Man. You're just standing there being like, Funny. you know, having a vision of how a major tournament's going to go. <laughs> and then, like, that the reality of that just, like, slapping you in yeah. the face. Like, maybe that grounds you a bit, though, too, oh, where you're like, God. you know what? I'm just golfing. Do you Did you see any of the hockey game that went four overtimes No, I was night? sleeping. Okay. <laughs> but I woke up to it. Can I was, you okay. imagine? You saw the—so yeah. you woke up and the game was yeah. still going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was still happening. Four overtimes, man. They were five, They were ten They're seconds so away from close. a fifth yeah. overtime. Yeah, That's I watched. Good. I watched that co- the UND game at the regional yeah. a couple which years went ago. Five overtimes, went five. which here in Fargo. Yeah. Like that was that yeah. was like I felt like I played a game or something after watching <laughs> that. When you're that, tired I mean, look after. at where there's ten seconds left in the fourth overtime. I mean, we're that close to the game going. Another intermission. Good on those fans and too starting for sticking around. Because that's in the Eastern time yes, zone. They, even. they like started that? that game at 8 o'clock Eastern, I believe, last night. So that was well after 1.30 in the morning Eastern oh. time when that game finished last night. Um, we didn't get to do it last week or because you were gone on Wednesday. Yeah. The NFL schedule is out. And Bunnell made graphics for everybody, so he made a Seahawks one for you. Oh, so, bl- awesome, so we man. so we go through the the Seahawks here. Because Holy cow! What do we make this of? This is a graphic. Uh, of, I know it's pretty. I love it. It's pretty sweet here. Um, open with the Rams. Yeah, that's They're, a win. I right? think so. Yep. Kay. I think that's a win. Detroit's going to be tough, tough game at the Lions, and that really could set the tone because if they remember win last that year, game, remember last year, you guys played a crazy game with the Lions. Yeah. That was the first game, right? Was it the first or the second game last year? Uh, that with was the Lions. that was early on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, they had Denver right away, but that really sets the tone because, like, you think they win it, they win against Carolina. Yep. They have tough time with Kay. the Panthers, though. And then the Giants. Then the Giants on a Mon- another road game on the East Coast, a yeah. Monday night game. At and then, the Giants, and then sin- at Cincinnati. Yeah, you're but, not winning that one. No, I don't. I don't think so. Arizona, you're winning. Yeah, I think there's a chance. Cleveland, you're winning. The, like, what I'm really looking at is that first that Thanksgiving game against San Francisco. Heading into that game, if they're a playoff contender, okay. they've got to be. They're going to play ten games before that. So I, I think they've got to be six and four. I was going to say seven and three. Okay, at six the, and four. at the worst okay. to make the playoffs at that point. I think they could be. As bad as five and five, or they could be as good as eight and two. Okay, I, let's just do this here. They're going to beat the Rams. Lions is a toss up. I'll I'll say they lose that game. Okay, they're going to beat the Panthers. They should beat the Giants. I think at New York. I think they'll Monday beat the night? Giants. Okay. I'm I'm they're not really I'm good not, at prime I'm time. not all in on the Giants yet. I haven't three and one. Yeah, lose to the Bengals okay. three and two. Beat the Cardinals four and two. Beat the Browns five and two. At Baltimore's tough, you know what I mean? Yeah, let's say five and three. Okay. Beat the commanders six and three. Six and three going into that game with the Rams, seven and three. So you're seven and three going into Thanksgiving. And yeah. it's a home game. It's a home game. And I mean that that could be really the Seahawks are really tough huge in prime time yeah. at home. But okay, but here's the th- after that. And then game, you go to Dallas for the Thursday night game. So you guys back got to two back Thursday, Thursday night, night games. Yeah. And they have three games in a 12-day stretch. Yeah, that's tough. At Dallas. That is not he- Okay, so let's, great. let's say, I think you split with the 49ers. So let's say Especially you. Especially because they play twice right. in a matter of 10 days. So you win you know? the Thanksgiving game, 8-3. and three, Lose sure. to Dallas, 8-4. and four, Lose at San Fran, 8-5. and five, Probably not going to beat the Eagles. I don't think so eight either. And six. And then they've got to beat, beat Titans, Tennessee. And, and at six. that point, and then Steelers and th- that's you tough. You split you know? there. So 10-7. Yeah. and seven. 
That gets I think you, ten that's, and seven that's is going to get you in, and I, I yeah. think that that's realistic. I think ten and seven, nine and eight, somewhere around there, it feels right for this team. Yeah, um, they're good. I think they're actually better than they were last year on paper. Yeah, but I don't know if they're going to have the same. You know, like they're going to definitely be on the on the on the you know fence there. But if they get hot early, say they go like eight and two or something, right? And then they get San Francisco and they beat them, like. They're in the driver's seat to win that division at that point. And and who knows what San Francisco is going to be early with their quarterback play. You know, I mean, they could be yeah. really good, but uh, they might not be. All right, let me ask you this because this was a hot topic, and we got a couple emails on this before I let you go. The NFL's decision to put one of the wild card games on Peacock yeah. exclusively. Ooh. Do you have Peacock? Right I don't now? have Peacock, Kay. and I don't plan to get it. Kay. I mean, unless Seattle's playing that was in my that next game, question. So, if, like, unless my team's yeah. in that game, I'm gonna just be like, no, I'm good. Okay, you know, because I I have Sunday ticket this year. I've, I've yeah. you know, they already got you. Yeah. You know what I mean? They already yeah. got you. And they're gonna get me. I mean, right. At, at some point, and we, I had a couple emailers, and they're I think they're dead on on this because because I said the the NFL knows people will pay for it because yeah. it's the NFL. Right. Baseball's not getting anybody signing up like tonight for the MLB Apple TV stuff. Yeah, no, 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 no thanks. You know what? You, you didn't buy that to watch no. the Mariners play no. one game. No. In, because it's 160 right. of them. Exactly. You know? Exactly. The NFL knows they can get you because yeah. they only play once a week. That's yeah. how they know they can do this. They're very good at it. Very good at it. Yeah. And I, they're doing this again with a regular season game. They're putting, I think it's the Bills and the Chargers are on mm-hmm. Peacock right before Christmas. That's a good game, too. It's a good game, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to get. There's just too there's many more, streaming services now. There's more you know? of this coming, though. You yeah. know that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is the tip of the iceberg that they're going to. Yeah. Well, we, this worked out. All right. I imagine, well. though, that at some point, those streaming services, th- there's going to be more consolidation there. You know, like I think. Well, that would be nice. <laughs> I don't think all of these streamers can make it. You know, I think at some point, yeah. like, it might just be down between like two or three big ones. And then at that point, okay. You know, well, maybe maybe I'd bite the bullet and get all of them. You know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm already there. You're already I'm there? Already... You have Peacock? Yeah, yeah I do. Well. I do. You know why? Because of the Premier League. I want sure. to watch yeah, the yeah, Premier yeah. League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I have, I have Disney, yep. Apple, yep. Amazon. Yep. Uh, Paramount I have. HBO. Can I... Can... Can I cancel Paramount because the U.S. soccer games aren't out there anymore, right? They're on HBO or they're on Max. Right. Yeah. So I can get rid that. of Paramount yeah. Plus. Get rid of Paramount. There you go. Doing it this weekend. All right. We're minus one. Netflix. Yep. Um, Hulu. <laughs> yep. I have the bundle, though, so I have yeah. all of them. You have all. Yeah. Yep. ESPN Plus. Right. You have to, though. They know Pretty this. Pretty much, yeah. I have Apple TV Plus, too, because I yeah. watch the baseball I'm, stuff. I'm a FOMO viewer though, so like maybe I will get Peacock just for that one, you know, for those games. I don't know. That's like, how they get my, you. If it's yeah, my right, team, right. for sure I'm signing up for well, it. Well, that's what I was saying to, to like to Viking fans. Let's say if the Vikes get put in that Saturday night mm-hmm. window, people are gonna say, Well, yeah, I'm gonna go get it. Yeah. Even if you cancel it right, right after it, you're gonna do it. And that's how they get you. Yeah. I tell you, man, there's more of this coming. It's great to see you. Thanks for coming Thanks by. For having Have me. a great weekend. Thanks for moving. Special Friday appearance by Drew Trafton, who joins us each Wednesday doing it on a Friday. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll chat some Minnesota Vikings, how the offseason is going. What's going to happen with Dalvin Cook? Alec Lewis will join us from The Athletic. We come back on Hot Mike right after this.
forget, we've got college baseball coming up tonight. Game two from Newman Outdoor Field, South Dakota State, North Dakota State. Hopefully we have a, just as close a game as we did last night. The Jacks won 6-5 to five last night. Game two comes up 6.30. WDAY Extra, KSFL in Sioux Falls and in Forum.com. We never get by a show, at least when I'm hosting, we don't talk about football. And even on May, whatever it is, 19th, football is always relevant around here. And uh, the Minnesota Vikings in the midst of their uh, OTAs, they'll have another session coming up next week. It's been a busy week for the Purple. Last Friday, the trading of Zadarius Smith opened the door for the signing of first-round pick Jordan Addison, which happened earlier this week. Our pleasure to welcome on to Hot Mike, making his debut, who covers the Vikings for the Athletic. Alec Lewis joins us on this Friday. Uh, you've made it now through one football season on the Vikings beat. Is it everything you thought and then some? This past season uh, was definitely everything I thought and then some. <laughs> I mean, it was a a whirlwind of mayhem um, in terms of some of the games I saw. First, thanks for having me down. Yeah, yeah it, I mean, I go back and I think about it all the time. Uh, I mean, the Eagles game – and on Monday night football, they got hammered. And then there were, I mean, the Buffalo game was absurd and the Colts comeback was ridiculous. And I remember throughout that stretch, my dad texts me. He's like, you realize like you're seeing some of the best games probably you'll ever see. And, <laughs> and uh, so I was, uh, it was really fun. And then the off season has not slowed down. So it's been a blast. I'm, I'm really grateful. Um, and I try not to take it for granted. And I, I, write and work so much that it's hard to stop and take it for granted. Well, it's funny because we were visiting off air about this. Like last Friday night is a perfect example. Like it's 630 thinking, all right, probably can power down for the night. And then bam, the Zadarius Smith trade happens. Exactly. No, that's exactly right. And, and, and when that thing happens, like for me, you have to like, okay, I got to get on the phone. Uh, what, what led to what made yeah. this happen? What, what, what allowed this to happen? Um, so yeah, it was, uh, that was one, I mean, truth be told, it was one that I had expected yep. for a while. Um, I think Zadarius had pr- made it pretty clear that he was uh, kind of ready to go unless the team paid him what he wanted to be paid. And so I think for the Vikings, it was a matter of, can we find somebody to give us something in return for this guy? And so it it it, it kind of worked its way with, with the Cleveland Browns. I know it's a cap move, but how do they make out on this pick swapping wise? Is this Was this an okay move? Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense. They 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 move. Essentially, it was a sixth and a seventh for two fifths. Right. I mean, it's not blow the doors off. It's not. It's. I mean, you're not going to come away with it feeling like okay, now we have the capital to go trade up for Caleb Williams. But I think just in general, it's like we could have lost this guy really for nothing, mm-hmm. or we we add a couple better picks. And so I think it's it it makes sense in the end. The other, obviously, it opened the door, Alec, for them to sign Jordan Addison, and they made that deal official. You got to see rookie camp last week. I get it's rookie camp. They're not going against anybody, but what are the initial impressions? Everybody, I'm sure, looks great because it's rookie camp. Yeah, no, Jordan Addison, I I think I wrote this, but it was like, you know how you go to a youth sporting event or your son or your, or your, your grandson's game or whatever? For me, it's like I go to friends, little brother's, And there's like that one kid who just looks more athletic than everybody else. And it's like, yeah, that kid's just natural. That was how Jordan Addison looked to me. Again, to your point, like we didn't see full contact, see him release off the line of scrimmage, that type of stuff. But he was, he looked really engaged. And I thought it was interesting. Kevin O'Connell said afterward, like we had met with Jordan on Zoom after the draft because we already want to get him up to speed with our playbook and some of the things he's going to have to learn I think it's it's notable like the Vikings offense they put a lot on these receivers and the in the fact that like the defense and the way the defense reacts after the snap can dictate certain routes and so I think for Jordan Addison to adapt to that as quick as possible is going to be important and I think it's going to be fun to to get out there next week and see him him probably alongside the other guys and, and working with Kirk. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Tell us about, I know you wrote a story on the BYU quarterback and Jaron Hall. If there, there might still be Viking fans, Alec, that maybe raised some eyebrows like, Oh, they took a quarterback in the, in the fifth round. Is this, is this the heir apparent here? Give us the, the Intel on, on Jaron Hall. Yeah. You know, I wrote a, I wrote a, a profile and I, I mean, I don't know for me, it's like, I love getting to know these guys and, and getting to know like what, why, what made him interesting for the Vikings. And, and I mean, he's got a pretty interesting path in that like he committed to BYU really early out of high school was an elite athlete with a lot of offers. And then 
over the course of his first couple years, he actually went on a mission, then got to BYU. Zach Wilson, who obviously was the number two pick a few years ago, was uh, won the starting job over Jaron. And Jaron, um, truth be told, like he could have transferred and he could have played elsewhere, but he didn't because he always wanted to play quarterback at BYU. He stayed around. He's athletic. Um, I think the people that have worked around him, John Beck is a former NFL quarterback who's worked with Drew Brees, Matt Ryan. He, he worked with Jaron Hall. He's like, I think it's a phenomenal fit. And so I, I, I agree with him. I don't think like, I don't think any Vikings fan or I don't think me as a reporter, you're ever going to be like, oh, here's this fifth rounder is going to be the next starter, but you never know mm. guy gets in the room and, and, and works with Kevin O'Connell and the quarterback coaches and, try to absorb information. And then I think a year from now you evaluate his progression and then make a decision on what, what they think is best at that position. All right. Now everyone wants to know though, what's, what is the, the quarterback situation? I mean, I, the, the, it seems on the outside, because now we we've progressed this far into the off season and, and nothing's to say, you know, Friday night, your phone could blow up again and there's a Kirk cousins contract extension, but it seems like the management is ready. We're going to let it ride in 2023 with Kirk and then we're going to we're going to figure it out. We might go somewhere else in in 2024. At least this that's my thoughts. You're on the inside. Is it you get the same vibe? Yeah, I think so. I mean, as as things currently stand and I'm I'm glad you said things could change because there are I mean, each side has wants and each side is, I mean, it's a negotiation. Right. So if it was a side that's like, you know what, we will we will move a little bit, I think that can change things. But for right now, I do believe that's the plan. It's Kirk Cousins contract voids after this year. Let's ride it out with Kirk. And I think Kirk is a guy who sees the situation. He's bet on himself numerous times in the past successfully. So why don't I play in this offense with Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson, uh, a familiar offensive line, do my best. And then put him, I think for him, it's like, I'll put myself in the best position to, to, to make more money or to prove to the Vikings that, that I'm worthwhile for the next few years. And I think from the Vikings standpoint, it's why would we lock it in if we don't have to at this point? Um, there are arguments to it of like, if you don't lock it in and then Kirk leaves, then and you don't have a quarter up behind him, what are you left with? So it's a it's a tedious situation. They're, the Vikings are operating where they want flexibility. And I think we'll just see what happens. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated. And I do think it's like around the league, you see certain teams and how they operate. And I think like, it's like, man, that's a lesson for how other teams, like, I think this situation and how they navigate it will be viewed by other teams as kind Mm. of like a teaching point. So I'm kind of just, I mean, I think everybody is just waiting to see what happens and, and, and what it tells us. From your Intel from leading up to the draft, were they, the Vikings clearly look, they weren't sold on Hendon hooker and will Levis that they let they, those guys were both on the board at 23 and pass them by. So it seems it was just the top three that they really liked. And beyond that, they weren't sold. Yeah. I mean, I think of those top three, I'm not totally sure which guys they were. They were, I mean, I know Bryce Young. I I do know like, but I mean, everybody watches Bryce Young and the command he had of that offense. And it's pretty obvious Um, as far as Levis and hooker. Yeah. I mean, I had heard a couple of things prior to the draft. It's like, uh, we, we they could both be there and we're right. not really. Um, yeah, I think those top three guys. I think for the Vikings to have made that decision and really like stake their claim on what where their future was going to be at that position, it had to be a guy that they were so sold on. And I just don't think that guy existed at that spot, or I don't think they were able to trade with with the capital they had to to get to the spot. Do we think there's a trade? <laughs> This is so hard to project, but if, yeah. if they like Caleb Williams or they like Drake May, or are they doing this again? Are they moving up in in the draft in twenty twenty four? I don't know what, what what capital they do that, but I'd be that wouldn't surprise me either. Considering every year we hear, well, this 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 quarterback class is so much better than the last one, and that's all we've heard about twenty twenty four is top QBs. Are they are they better than the top guys in twenty twenty three? Well, I think the ch- I think there it's definitely possible. I think the challenge is. If you run it with Kirk this year and you win, let's say, 10 games right. and you're picking at 19 or 20, then it's going to be really hard, be hard to get up to that top three spot from a trade capital perspective. So I think that's why how they're operating right now in this competitive rebuild is going to be looked at by others because it's like, man, if you if you if you just 
got rid of Kirk and lost, I don't know, and, and won three games and were picking at the top, then you get your quarterback, what have you. So it's kind of admirable, I think, in some ways that they're not just stripping it to the studs. And yeah. I will say, like, ownership wants to be really competitive. So the so, so I don't think that would even be an option, really. Um, but, I yeah, I mean, I think next year if they're picking at 14 or 12 and, and Jaron Hall hasn't emerged and they haven't re-signed Kirk, we're, we we have to have the conversation. <laughs> That's just the nature of this sport, for Are, sure. We know the the big day, Alec. Before we let you go, is June one for Dalvin Cook. We so again, is this something we're just waiting? Any time this could happen, that they, I, I can't imagine releasing is an option though. They're trying to find a trade partner, right? Yeah, I think that would be the priority, but it's it's difficult because. <laughs> it's difficult because Dalvin Cook's cap hit is is 14 million, which is right. the top four cap hit among running backs. So for another team to take on Dalvin Cook via trade, they're going to have to have the cap space to do that. And the teams that need running backs around the league, I think a lot of them don't have that type of cap space. So it's a it's a really um, it's a complex situation. I think to your point, you would the team would definitely prefer to trade him and acquire assets for him but I I also think I mean I'm not going to rule out the idea that Dalvin Cook and his camp say you know what no other team's going to pay us 14 million and if we love Minnesota and we want to do it for 9 million compared to another team like we we could take a pay cut and do that I mean you've seen the Vikings and how they've operated this offseason Jordan Hicks took a pay cut Harrison Smith took a pay cut they both wanted to be here if Dalvin and and his camp ultimately think that's that's an option. I, I I think it's possible. So I think there's a there's just so much to sort through. It's like, can we find a trade partner? Maybe, maybe a team box can can are we willing to take a pay cut? No, but maybe at some point we are. So hmm. there's a lot to kind of sort through before that 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 has that pans out. And I think there's that's why it's it's lasted to this point. I just love how, especially in the NFL, like everyone freaked out. We talked about on the show yesterday that the Vikings Twitter header had Alexander Madison on it. And no longer Dalvin Cook. Like we, well, we got to put two and two together that the Vikes are moving on because he's not on the main Twitter header anymore. No, I saw that like on NFL Network. They're talking <laughs> about it. And I'm, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I mean, this, is, this is the sport. This is the league. No, no. It is what. It is. And I, and I will say this: like the Vikings re-signed Alexander Madison for a reason. I know talking to people in that building, whether Dalvin's back or not, they really want to see Alexander Madison get more carries and more touches. So. It makes sense, but yeah, I mean, seeing not seeing him on the header, it's like, I mean, this is a guy who's been a franchise figure. It's interesting. We can talk about it. I'll just kind of wait for the the move or, or move to be made. That's oh, that's, that's how I operate. I I'll let you go so your phone can ring because I'm sure with well, the NFL something will always. It's a Friday, so you never know about the Friday news dump. Thanks so much for doing this, bud. We'll do this again, okay? Yeah, no doubt. Thank you, Dom. I appreciate you having me. Alec Lewis from the Athletic Minnesota Vikings beat writer does a great job covering the Vikes, and there is no shortage of things to talk about, and we'll have him on again. Uh, the Vikes are actually back on the field on Tuesday for a practice. Uh, players and coaches will be available next week, so uh, there'll be questions asked, asked of Kevin O'Connell. Their OTAs continue uh, May 30th, then June 6th, and then their uh, mini camp goes in the middle of May. And then they have their basically a five-week break. And then we're back talking football all the time. Not that we stop it on this show, but then we're really talking about it once uh, training camp gets going. We'll take a break and wrap up our one of Hot Mike. We'll update things with the PGA. Big second hour of our show coming as well. We'll do that right after this.
Our thanks to Alec Lewis. He was really good. We'll have him on again to chat some Vikings as we move through the offseason, get closer to the start of 2023. I told uh, the golf course is going to be impossible today. Hoagie hasn't even hit a shot, and now he's inside the cut line. He's already moved up five spots, and he hasn't even hit a golf ball yet. Uh, that's how things are moving here. He'll tee off in a, almost about two hours' time uh, from Oak Hill. He starts the day now tied for 68th. Again, the top 70 and ties will play the weekend, and it looks like Oak Hill has got some teeth to it uh, today because it has already uh, fluctuated on the cut line. So uh, we'll see. The leader right now, Bryson DeChambeau, is the clubhouse leader, shot 66 yesterday. Uh, Justin Rose is now moving to a tie for second with Corey Connors and Scotty Scheffler. Scheffler every week, every week, that guy is at the top of the leaderboard, and uh, he's hunting again. He shot 67 yesterday. They're all playing in the afternoon. And I will say this on ESPN's coverage of of the PGA, because this is the uh, – it's probably the, the loosest of the championships. And what I say by that, you have the Masters, which is so strict, they're only going to show you what they want you to see. And then U.S. Open is great. They get a ton of golf. I mean, thankfully, they've opened that up now where you get a ton of it. And the British Open is awesome, but you got to get up at, you know, basically 1 o'clock in the morning and you can watch the whole thing. The PGA, finally, they've let the, the reins go where literally, if you wanted to, and I'm sure there were some at 6 a.m. this morning that flipped on the Watch ESPN app or on ESPN Plus and watch the start and can watch every shot. Every shot. That's what every major should be. I don't know why it's that difficult, and I say that as someone who works in live sports television. We know days are long, but uh, for the major championships, that doesn't seem like that much of an ask. If, if we could do that, that should be how, uh, how it's done. So um, I say kudos to that on ESPN for being able to uh, to do that and – for those that love golf as much as I do, at least watching it, especially the majors, that's pretty good stuff. So um, we'll see how the weekend plays out. They'll have coverage in the morning on Saturday and Sunday. Then CBS takes over for uh, the major chunks of stuff, what's happening uh, this weekend. So we'll see and see if our guy Hoagie can play into the weekend. He'll tee off, as I mentioned, 11.58. He'll begin his second round at Oak Hill Country Club. We will take a break. We come back. We'll start hour two. Chat some Bison women's basketball. Dylan Geiser will join us. Now, Jory Collins, real right-hand man for the Bison women's basketball team. Hour two of Hot Mike on a Friday. We'll begin right after this.
This is Hot Mike. Hot Mike. On the networks of WDAY. WDAY. Here's Dom Izzo. Welcome back, everybody, to a Friday morning edition of Hot Mike, WDAY Extra, KSFL TV, and Sioux Falls, Inforum.com, Sioux Falls Live, wherever you can stream us. We're available one more hour in our week for it's the weekend. We've got a busy night tonight. Of course, we got Summit League Baseball tonight, Bison Jackrabbits uh, from Newman Outdoor Field, and they'll wrap up the series tomorrow with a matinee at Newman on Senior Day, and then the Summit League Baseball Tournament, which you're going to see right here on Extra beginning on Wednesday. There's no off-season for us. We're we keep on rolling. Speaking of no off-season, certainly isn't it, uh, the college basketball world, whether it's the transfer portal, name, image, likeness going on, and, of course, recruiting because uh, we've reached that time of the year, and uh, there's AAU tournaments going on all over the place, and uh, this is the time of the year where normally you see commitments start to pop, and we'll be keeping an eye on that. And our next guest is on the road for recruiting and making his hot mic debut. He's been in town for four years. We haven't had him on the show yet. He got uh, a big promotion, so now he's a big-timer enough that he can come on the show. Uh, now associate head coach of the Bison women's basketball team, Dylan Geiser, joins us uh, on a Friday morning. First off, thanks for making time for us. Second, uh, congratulations, and um, tell me about this. Was this uh, in the works for a bit, or how did this all come about with you and Jory? Yeah, thanks for having me, Dom. I'm glad to be here. Um, and, you know, we have some postseason, like, evaluation meetings, and just like you do with your players and that sort of thing. And going into those, um, you know, as a young professional and, and young in this business, just trying to find ways that I can keep growing and, and still be in Fargo and still be a part of NDSU where I want to be. Um, and so just the idea of, of associate head coach was kind of the next step in um, my career. And so going into that and just talking with Jory about it and him feeling comfortable enough with me and my role here and what I contribute um, to, to promote me that way um, was exciting for me. Okay, I got to ask this. You have your master's in digital content strategy. Tell me about, I'm interested in that. Tell me what, what goes into that. It's a lot more people, when you hear that, you think about like graphic design and that sort of thing, but it's a lot more of behind the scenes things like the numbers and the analytics yeah. behind like tweet that you put out yep. um, and what all that really means um, and how to to utilize the interactions you get on social media to optimize what you're trying to do, whether that's in the sports world or the business world. See, I'm fascinated with that stuff because I'm always interested to see like what what kind of reach goes for certain like some tweets you, you put out that, well, this will get to a lot of people and some right. don't. And some others ones you're like, well, this is just an innocuous one. And that ends up blowing up. I'm always fascinated yeah. with that kind of thing. It's a lot of, it's really a lot of, it's basically digital marketing yeah. um, and really how can you utilize your social media to best benefit whatever you're trying to do. How have you seen that you for your job here? How have you guys used that and utilized that at, at Bison Women's Basketball? Yep. We've talked with like the marketing team at NDSU about like how and who should be tweeting what about our program mm -hmm. during the year. Like, is it best for coaches to place individual tweets from all four of our personal accounts or is it best to use the NDSU women's basketball account which has a little bigger reach and a little more followers um, and so just discussing with them those sorts of things is kind of where that's come into play for sure it's a neat, it's the new world right man it's not just you know talking to people or email this is the way it's whether it's twitter facebook tiktok instagram wherever i'm sure there's another right. platform i'm missing that you're trying to hit on people now right yep absolutely it's changing every day and it's hard to keep up with that's why you pay the big bucks now, right? <laughs> Something like that, Tom. Tell me about, you know, I, we had Jory on. We had him throughout the year, and we're going to do that again this this coming season. As, as now if you've been removed from the year from a couple months, how do you – you had obviously a great year, but I know it ended not the way you wanted. How do you evaluate as a whole? Because I'm sure you're sour about the ending. How do, how do you not let that affect how the whole season went? Um, it's really, like you said, looking at the big picture – um, and just the steps that we're taking as a program, um, like the WNIT finishing second in the Summit League, um, those are things that are all steps to where we want to get to. And just being able to look past maybe the ending that doesn't happen the way you want um, and really kind of focus on, well, we did a lot of good things still um, and thinking about those. And, and obviously, as a coach, it's frustrating when you feel like you left two, three, four games out there. Mm. Um, and you look at your record and you're like, well, dang, what if we had three more 
<laughs> duck wins in that column and three less losses in that column, what would that look like? Um, but really just focusing on the growth and the individual improvement um, and then kind of seeing all that individual improvement through our players show up on the court and wins and losses is, is rewarding to see. And you have a couple players as well that didn't even play this year that could be major contributors for you this year. Can you describe that of the two players that redshirted that think, okay, we, we can add a couple more pieces to this team? Yeah, Leah McKenzie, the point guard from Australia, um, she had really just started feeling comfortable with herself here, um, comfortable with her skill set and what we're doing on offense and defense when she hurt her knee. Um, and so she's going to be tremendous for us next year. She's a different type of ball handler, athlete, more physical, strong at the guard position that we've had in the past. And so um, just really excited about her ability to, to get her teammates involved, score the ball. I think, you know, we had our scrimmages last year. I think she, before she got hurt, she maybe had 18 points in that scrimmage. Ooh. And so um, just really excited for her. And then, Marwa Bedziri, um, the post player from Sweden, uh, just the most gifted naturally, athletically um, post player that we've had here. Um, she's 6'3", almost 6'4", with extremely long arms. Mm. Um, so as she can, she'll take a little time to get comfortable, but as she gets comfortable in what we're doing and what we're asking her to do, um, the sky's really the limit for her. You obviously signed uh, Grace Masakoy from NDSCS. Uh, what kind of player can she be for your team? What can she add that you maybe didn't have last year? Yeah, just some quick twitch athleticism at the guard spot. Um, she's 5'10", 5'11", can play really two through four if you wanted her to. Mm. Uh, she's a downhill driver that, you know, elevates around the rim with a lot of body control and a lot of touch. Um, and that's just something – this spring when we knew we were probably adding one player um, that we were looking for was a little more physical ability at the guard spot. Um, and she absolutely has the whole package when it comes to that. So you got five new players coming in off a team that won 18 games uh, and brings a, a good portion of that roster back. What does that make for off season when you guys get started here in a couple of weeks? Like this is, is it, we pick right up where we left off or we've got to go back to kind of, you know, not square one, but you've got to take some baby steps before you get going. Yeah, that's the good thing about being at this level is you can kind of take it a little bit slower. Mm. We get to work with them all summer. Um, it's really exciting for one to have, you know, five new young women coming in that are talented. Um, you get to work with them for the first time and see what they're really capable of on the court. Um, and so just taking it slow with some skill development stuff, putting in some base offensive concepts this summer. Um, just seeing how they move and, and how they make certain reads in our offenses um, is kind of what we do all summer. So it's really just exciting um, to have a lot more talent coming in that is new um, and just figuring out how to kind of piece the puzzle together for us next year. So I mentioned when we got started here, you're on the road recruiting here. And I'm I, I'm interested for people that don't know the, the nuts and bolts of this, Dylan, especially on the women's side, for – what you're looking at now, how early now are offers literally being extended on the women's side? Are we talking freshmen and eighth graders have been offered around here? Is that more right. the norm or is that the exception because of how talented they are? That's probably the exception. Okay. Uh, I know we hear about those kids, but there, there aren't very many of those kids that are seventh graders and get division one offers. Um, for us, it starts mainly when you get into high school, um, you know, and it's a little different up here when you can play varsity sports as a seventh grader. Um, so you get a little clearer yep. picture where it's like where I'm from in Kansas, that's not really a thing. Um, you only play varsity sports when you're a freshman in high school. So it comes a little bit later down there, but up here, we try to really pick it up once you get into high school, once you've played some varsity basketball, that sort of thing. I mean, there's always those phenoms that are going to be sixth graders and get their offers, but you know, those kids just are, are not the norm. Is that almost too early in terms of getting a, a seventh grader, get an offer, an eighth grader, say, okay, that's a lot. Division one basketball, there's a lot to that. You know it. You were, you're in it every day that when <laughs> the person isn't even in high school yet, is that is that almost too much too soon? I think it depends on the person and yeah. the program. Um, um, and so it's a lot about the relationship with that kid and are you committed to continuing that relationship over the next – it's going to be six years yeah. before they ever would step foot on your campus. <laughs> Um, and so you're going to really get to know them really well if you are committed to that. And so I think it is definitely a case by case, team by team basis. And so if you feel that's right for your program, I think 
then there's no doubt that if that kid, you're going to offer a sixth grader, then they're going to be a good enough basketball player. When you see Caitlin Clark play, what comes to mind? She's amazing. Um, and, and one of a kind for sure. I know people compare to all sorts of, of other players, men's and, and women's players. And so she's just the ability to shoot off the bounce with that range. Mm -hmm. Um, and then make her teammates so much better averaging seven, eight, nine assists a game is, is one of a kind. And, and she's kind of been turned loose in that Iowa system where she's allowed to have the ball and make plays for other people. And, and you kind of can see what she's capable of. Can you come on the air and say you're going to schedule a game with Iowa this year? Can you just go and do that? We don't, Jory, oh, we don't care. Come on, just go ahead and tell us. You can do yeah. that. Just chase her around for 40 <laughs> minutes. I mean, that, would, that would be fun. There's no doubt about that. You got something in the works? Jory tells – I know he's been – he told me they've talked to a couple teams, and then you guys got good, and then those teams said, no, nah, we're not going to play you now. Yeah, it, in my four years here, it has gotten significantly harder to get teams to come to Fargo. Uh -huh. um, and so we're trying to find ways to get different teams to come um, and play some new teams. I mean, there's every mid-major team in the region's good. Yeah. <laughs> so it's funny when you, you we keep playing Wisconsin Green Bay, we keep playing Northern Iowa, like those sorts of teams. And so just trying to maybe find some new opponents for our girls um, is kind of something we're working on. So you go and beat Minnesota, and now that's all. You know what I mean? Like that, that's not going to happen again, right? Right. And <laughs> I think it was made, was it our first year when Wisconsin came to Fargo and we <laughs> lost by one. Yeah. And so it's getting harder and harder to get those sorts of teams to Fargo. Let me ask you now with, with getting promoted here, was head coach something that was always on the horizon or now it's become something attainable over what's happened here in Fargo over the last couple of years for you? Um, I think coming up here, I kind of knew I wanted to be a head coach, um, but just the timeline of when that was going to happen for me, when and where, um, was always, you know, a question and it's getting obviously clear as I get more experience um, and, and I've rose a little bit here in my role. Um, and so really just kind of making sure that if those opportunities do present themselves to me, that I'm in the position that I need to be in to, to give myself the best chance to get a job like that. All right. You're a basketball junkie. So let me ask you this. Why on, for the people that, that maybe don't watch all the time, why are people so down on the nuggets? Like, why don't people appreciate how good Jokic is? Tell me, what am I, what are, what are we missing? On the, Cause everyone wants to talk about the Lakers and the Lakers blew right. the first two games. Not that the nuggets won the first two games. I think again, and just like you said, Caitlin Clark, he's one of a kind. Yeah. Um, and just maybe isn't as flashy as some other people. I mean, he plays below the rim and he's almost seven foot tall. Um, you don't see him elevating for any crazy dunks or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and so it can be maybe a little more boring to the casual fan, but if you know the game and know what you're watching, just his ability to see things oh. and do things that nobody else can do is pretty unbelievable. His passing is the one Dylan always gets me. He's just a phenomenal passer. Yep. And that's what just the vision that mm. he has. And he sees things before they happen and the anticipation he can play with is one of a kind. That's for sure. Great stuff. I'm so glad we got a chance to do this. Congrats on the promotion. Uh, I know you're a busy man out there. I hope we get a little time off, and we'll do this again soon, okay? Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Don. Good to see you, bud. There he goes. Dylan Geyser, now NDSU Associate Head Coach of the Bison Women's Basketball Team. As uh, the offseason now off and rolling, of course, the Bison added uh, Grace Masticoy from NDSCS. We talked to her last week. Bison have five incoming players for the class of 2023. That's to go on top of, we mentioned the two that didn't play last year in Leah McKenzie and uh, Marwa Bidziri. I'll be really intrigued. That's a team that won 18 games. Now there's expectations. And that's the hardest thing always to uh, to deal with and to play with is now people are going to expect you to be good. You just finished second in the Summit League that, okay, there's going to be a heck of a lot more attention on L. Evans, who was out of nowhere last year to become the freshman of the year. Um it's a known quantity with Heaven Hamling. Um, you've got a bunch of new talent that's going to be asked to step in and, and play some some major minutes in spots that either they haven't done before or haven't been asked to before. And I got a feeling the rest of the league is going to be better. I think South Dakota is going to take a step forward. I'm interested on UND with bringing Casey Barovich back. If you've missed the news, uh, Tom Middle reported, our colleague from the Grand Forks Herald, that uh, – Mallory Bernard's losing her two top assistants are both leaving to go to Central Michigan. Uh, that news coming out this morning. So uh, 
She's got some work to do there. South Dakota State is still going to be the, uh, the head and shoulders favorite until somebody actually challenges them. Uh, the Jacks, despite the fact that Selen is gone, uh, they still, and Burkhart's gone, they still have some dynamite young talent as well. Timmer's really good. Uh, they're, they're still going to be the head and shoulders above everybody else in the league. Uh, and then you look at beyond that, like the team that Omaha made it to the conference championship game. Where are they at? Kansas City, Denver, teams that, frankly, they beat the Bison during the season. You know, I mean, is it was it just a mediocre league and one really good team? Probably, is how it turned out to be. Um, can there be more parity and be some teams that are, are good and, and challenge? And you have to add in the fact now Western Illinois is not there. So there's one less team in the uh, – that I don't know if you could count on for two wins. I think St. Thomas is going to be better. It's just a matter of time on that. So uh, I'm intrigued to see what happens on um, Bison Women's Basketball for uh, 2023-24. We'll take a break. Continue on on a Friday morning. Hot Mike back after this on WDAY Extra, KSFL-TV, and Inforum.com.
Don't forget, we've got Summit League Baseball back tonight. NDSU, SDSU. 6.30, WDAY Extra, Inforum.com. Couple of news and notes here, NFL-wise. Athletic has a story on former Bison quarterback Trey Lance. Headline goes, 49ers Trey Lance made, quote, substantial jump working alongside Patrick Mahomes. The uh, story is written by Matt Barrows. says uh, that Lance has been working with Jeff Christensen, who's the private QB coach who also works with Patrick Mahomes. And Christensen says in the article that watching Mahomes is how Lance made his biggest jump. It was something I was telling him that he wasn't quite doing. And then he saw Patrick apply it perfectly. And I think that visual buy-in, that mental buy-in, helped him pass the mental hump. And to his credit, he just kept getting better. Over the last seven days, every day was a substantial jump. Now, the 49ers are set to have their first practices uh, next week. That's when everybody basically gets in the boat for the NFL offseason. Um, he'll be out there. He'll be joined by Sam Darnold. And the 49ers just signed Brandon Allen earlier this week. 49ers are going to have 10 quarterbacks because they need them all because they all got hurt. But, again, you know, I made this prediction – Two, three weeks ago now, the week of the draft, saying that uh, Trey wasn't going to be on the team by the end of the draft. And here we sit now in the middle of near the end of May, and he's still a member of the team. Um, and they very, very well be ready to ride with him. We know Brock Purdy is going to be the guy. Um, but the 49ers invested a lot, traded three first-round picks to move up to get Trey Lance. And he started all of five games for the team. Again, I'll reiterate, he hasn't even played double-digit amount of football games since he won the national championship here in the fall of 2019. Okay? Has not. Played one game in 2020 because of the COVID year. 2021, he played four. Last year, two. Okay? So we're we're not even <laughs> double-digit. He's barely played any football. So to automatically think that this is over, it's not going to work. I think that's short-sighted. It may not work there, but I still think there's still something to that. So uh, one other NFL note that came through, because I know people like to know this, um, the NFL league meetings are set actually for next week in Minneapolis. And according to ESPN, that the Super Bowl in 2026, that Super Bowl 60 is heading to... The Bay Area to San Francisco. Um, Barring a sudden change of direction, according to ESPN.com, the 49ers bid for Super Bowl 60 in 2026 is slated to be approved by the NFL, a league source said, confirming a report by the Sports Business Journal. Be the first time that the Super Bowl is there since Super Bowl 50 when Denver beat Carolina, Peyton Manning's last game. In the third in the the Bay Area, the, uh, the Niners beat Miami in Super Bowl uh, 19, a game that was played at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto in 1985. Uh, the league meetings in March, the 49ers sought a $120 million loan from the NFL Stadium Fund to make improvements to Levi Stadium. It, that place just opened. Uh, how do they already need improvements? Granted, U.S. Bank Stadium needs $200 uh, million or whatever to update. Uh, that money is slated to go toward premium seating and scoreboard upgrades at Levi's with an eye toward the 2026 World Cup and bolstering their position for future Super Bowls. Now, McFeely's been there. It's not in San Francisco. It's Santa Clara. You're a ways away um, from San Francisco, from what he said. Um, But that will go back into the rotation um, for Super Bowls. And for those hoping that Minneapolis would get another one, uh, it might be another 25 years before they go back to U.S. Bank Stadium. After going there and listening to some of the uh, reporters that come from around the country as we were waiting in security to get in and freezing, that they were not prepared for that, I would think it's going to be a long ways before uh, they get a Super Bowl back. So uh, it looks like it'll be San Francisco, the Bay Area, that will get Super Bowl uh, 60. I don't know. I think that's the one. Yeah, guys are working Google Maps here for me. Yeah, you can see where Levi Stadium is and where San Francisco is. That is not uh, not close. So uh, we know this year 
is uh, Las Vegas in February of 25. They go to New Orleans. And then February of 26, that will be in, uh, in San Francisco. So we know that uh, for the next couple. And then beyond that, who knows? I know some have been talking about the fact that they want to go to, will they ever put it overseas? Will they ever put it in London? Will they ever put it um, in Berlin, you know, where they're they're having more success of the uh, overseas games, the international games? I would find that hard to believe. But um, yeah, it appears like it looks like Dallas may get into the mix for 2027. At AT and T Stadium, they haven't been back there since uh, I want to say when Green Bay beat Pittsburgh. They were in AT and T at Jerry World for that, um, and then when they had a terrible ice storm, if I remember right. Again, weather plays a huge deal with this. If the weather is bad, like it was in Minneapolis, they're not going back. If the weather was bad in Dallas, if I remember right, and that's why they haven't gone back. But if you build a new stadium, they that's how they reward you. Vegas got one. They went there. For the life of me, I'll never, I'll never understand why they went to New York. They, for some reason, they went there. That was the year that the Seahawks beat the, uh, the Broncos and wanted to play it uh, outside in February. Not their smartest move they ever made there. It should be just like a rotation. Miami, well, it used to be San Diego. Um, Miami. L.A. is fine because SoFi is pretty cool. Um, New Orleans. Is that it? I don't know who else you put in there. I mean, San Francisco is fine. I mean, the weather you think is going to be pretty good. Where else are you going to go? I mean, Houston's been in there. That stadium's just okay. That should be the rotation, basically. I know they've gone to Indianapolis. I don't think they're going back there anytime soon. Uh, Detroit they went to. They're not doing that. Any, you know, they want to send their fans to warm weather uh, areas. That's why it's it's Miami, New Orleans, and L.A. It's probably the rotation of where they're – Tampa is fine. They just had it there a couple years ago when Brady won. That's that's fine. That's Atlanta can work because they have a dome. That's probably where you could have the rotation of the Super Bowl. I'd be interested now going forward. But that 2026 one, uh, I believe that's the first one that ESPN gets as part of its new TV deal as well. They get uh, the Super Bowl in 26 and 2030 are going to be televised on ESPN and ABC as they get back into the Super Bowl rotation. But uh, that is coming up next week. Uh, There's always something out of the league meetings as well. So I'd be interested if they end up uh, pursuing any of the new rules that they've talked about as well. That's normally when those get decided at the league meetings, which are happening in Minneapolis next week. So, again, here we are, middle of May, football, the uh, the dominant chatters we're talking here uh, on a Friday. We'll take a break. We come back. Logan Campbell will join us, her usual Friday appearance. We'll chat about the game last night, preview we got coming up as well. We'll do that when Hot Mike returns on a Friday morning. We're back after this.
Oh no, she did not. I hear her hair is insured for ten thousand dollars. We need someone there that knows what they're doing, obviously. <laughs> All right, it's Friday. Logan's here as we are wrapping up. You are our final segment of the week here. Wow. So we got to end in style, all right? Got to end have on you, a good note, have right? You, have you unfrozen from last night? A little you were bit. <laughs> Barely. I slept with my window open because, for whatever reason, my apartment complex was shutting the power off between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m., and I get hot when I sleep, So, and I was freezing when I woke up this morning. But Well, wait a minute. First off, viewers know about your... The sleep temperature after uh, oh, you yeah, and yeah. Say had the, whole, to be had the whole like thing on our show degrees. here. So. It was 54 when I woke oh up. Oh, my God. Morning. Yeah, it was a little cold. 54? <laughs> it was a little bit cold. Holy cow. Yeah, but so that didn't really help, but we're, yeah, we're getting say. there. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to bring some blankets in here. A blanket actually, will. Actually, if you stay in this studio long enough, you'll hot. warm up. It it warm. It gets, it gets warm. A blanket here, will so. be brought to the baseball game tonight, Probably though. a smart idea. Um I got an email in this saying, what's going on? The SDSU has got NDSU's number. It's not just football. And I mentioned this on the broadcast last night. Not just football. Granted, men's basketball got them the one that counts because mm-hmm. NDSU won at the Summer League Tournament in Sioux Falls. Um, but right now. It's even. If, well, and, um, SDSU's got them in almost everything so far this yeah. year. They won in wrestling, won in soccer, volleyball. I don't know what's going on, but it's well, SDSU's doing pretty well. It's one game of a three-game yep. series, so I guess we'll see what happens tonight and tomorrow. But, yeah, it's those games, we always know they're going to be great yep. games, no matter what sport it is. NDSU and SDSU always be an instant classic. That was, and I know uh, you had a feature on Parker Pitts we ran on the news earlier um, in the week. He pitched really well, he did. really well last night. And David and I were talking about, David Ernst and I were talking about during the broadcast, he solidified whatever – Tyler wants to use him next week. If it's his number two guy or if he's the first guy out, if things go haywire next week, he was really good. He's it, been really good. It's just incredible that a true freshman can yeah. go up on the mound and do what he did last night in such a big game, too, for NDSU. Like, these high-pressure situations. When I talked with Tyler Oaks, he, he literally said, you can't tell he's a freshman mm. on the mound. He's so even-keeled. He does. He's not up or down, which is really hard for an 18-year-old man. Yeah. So. He's fun to watch. I really enjoyed watching and him pitch. He's that's not even his best sport. At least coming out of high school, no, as you was. found out, it, that that wasn't his best sport. Baseball, yeah. like he said, he kept. Everyone was asking him, "Where are you going to play football? Where are you going to yeah. play football?" And he said, "I have no desire to play football anywhere." Which I thought was kind of surprising because yeah. when I was doing research on him, you know, he was 11B State Player of the Year yeah. in football, and he said. Literally, since he was four, he knew he wanted to play baseball. And no one was looking at him for baseball besides no. NDSU and maybe two other schools. SDSU wasn't even looking at him for baseball. So they got a steal out of Parker Pitts. And he's been really good. And we'll see him sometime next week. And again, I'll remind people that didn't watch our broadcast last night. This series is ba- is to determine the, the second seed of the tournament. They know they're playing one another. So mm-hmm. there there is some gamesmanship here. Where we're not going to see NDSU's best pitcher, Kate Feeney's not pitching yep. this weekend. That they're going to save him for the game on Wednesday when they know that's the game they absolutely have to win. It's not, and I'm not saying the Bison weren't trying to win last night. They want to win, but basically they already know it's it's a matter of who's going to be the home team right. next week. Everything else has already been determined on that. Right, and I think NDSU has a handful of great pitchers. We're going to see Tristan tonight. Yeah, Tristan Roach is going to go I, tonight. I yep. would expect him to pitch just as well, if not maybe a little bit better than Parker. Mm. So they're fine resting Cade. I think they're in fine hands. The neat part about it, and we showed it, was uh, Brian Barasa coming in. We had him on the show on Wednesday. Uh, he told me he was going to have a bunch of family members. I know there were a little bit last night. There might be more uh, tonight. He was awesome. He was really good coming in I was in sitting last night. down there, and the zip from the yeah. ball hitting the glove, yeah. that was like the loudest it was the entire night. Yeah, and, it was popping. Yep. Yes, and yep. just a three strikeouts at, in the ninth inning. I mean, what a great way to close out the game for yep. him. Um, and just talking with him after, he was like, I can't believe I did that. I was <laughs> like, that was pretty impressive, yeah. <laughs> he's been doing that since he's uh, since he arrived at SDSU after his uh, year at Bismarck State. He's been really good. And uh, I don't know if we'll see him tonight. That that might be something, again, that Rob Bishop may have, the SDSU coach, maybe say, okay, we got him. Let's, let's just see what happens here. They needed him last night in such a close game, too. Yeah. And he said he loves those situations, so not a better person to put in. Well, and that's, you know, the mentality of a reliever, we were talking about, that that is tough. You're coming in, whether you start an inning or you're coming in like he did. He came in in the middle of it at bat because mm-hmm. the pitcher before him already threw one ball, so the count was 1-0 and when he came in in the eighth inning. That's 
that's not easy. That no. is not an easy thing to do. I don't. That's that's tough stuff there. No. So being a pitcher would be so hard. The mental game is pretty much half the battle. See, I feel like. starting I think is not too bad because you know you're you know you're going out there to do it. Reliever is another thing. Mm-hmm. Sit around wait like all right, we know. Things that might be crumbling around you when we're going to give you the ball. We're asking you to take care of it. Pick up the pieces you know? and put it all together. That I yeah. don't. That, that's a tough deal there. Okay, so the last time you were on, uh, your favorite football team has been sold. It's over and done with, correct? Yes. It's, it's a done deal? Done, done deal. Josh Harris is the new man in charge. Now, so I read this story um, that the sale of this wouldn't have happened if it was anybody but the Snyders, that the NFL owners hate him because of all the investors that are involved, it wouldn't have been approved if it was somebody else. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't see that yes, article. Yes, that at Pro Football Talk had a story on that, that how many other people are trying to glom on with, with Harris that the NFL has said no, but because they hate the Snyders so much, or him, they said, yeah, I mean, go as for they should. it. Go but for it's it. just, what is wild to me is that he's just getting away with just the team being sold and there's nothing else happening to him. That is the part that's wild. Are we to sure me. on that? Like they're, the investigations are going to stop? That's not, I don't know. I mean, to public knowledge, nothing's yeah. been said. But I mean, at least the team sold. We're heading in the right direction, I hope. And I think people are celebrating back at home. I think at some, I don't know which baseball game, there's a few AAA teams in Virginia. Yeah. But if your name was Josh or if your last name was Harris, you got free beer the entire <laughs> night. Like, people are stoked about this. Oh, man. I'm what? sure I'm stoked about it. First Order of Business is getting a new stadium. They're talking about potentially tearing down RFK and building that back up. Really? Because now Muriel Bowser, the D.C. mayor, is saying mm. she's open to having the stadium built in D.C. now because Dan's out. So Harris says, predicts that dumping the Dan will result in greater attendance. Yes. I would so people so. are staying away because of the owner? There are signs and, like, bags on people's heads at the game <laughs> saying, sell the team. Okay. Yeah. Increased ticket revenue. Well, that goes hand in hand if there are more people. Enhanced sponsorship revenue. Is that a thing that nobody wants to get on uh, board? The big beer company, I forget who it is, wouldn't partner with. No kidding. Um, Washington this year. And the last one, uh, up to one point five billion in public funding for a new stadium in mm-hmm. Virginia. That's not surprising at all. Mm. That was a big. No one would let him buy property anywhere. They didn't want his yeah. name associated with their companies. Yeah, the Washington Post had the story. I'll forward this to you. It said, absence the league's desire to dump Dan Snyder, Josh Harris' bid would not have been approved. Do you have a login? I don't have a login. I don't <laughs> want to pay. <laughs> so there you have it. With, uh, with I'm, I'm so excited about it. I think the next question is, are they going to rebrand? People want them to rebrand. They want to change from the commanders? Fans do. Really? Yeah. They're not, they don't like it. To what? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. People don't like change. Well... People want it back, back to, to Washington football team. People I was going to say that. To go I, back all, to that. Okay, if they want to do WFT, I'm on board with that. It's yeah. better than WTF, thought, but I'm on board with what WFT kind of on that yeah. one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I still don't you know, think they'll do the that. The one but. they threw out there was uh, the Red Tails. I like that one. Mm-hmm. I don't think that got a whole lot of momentum behind it. I can't remember the other. Red uh, Wolves was the one that Red everyone Wolves? wanted. Red Wolves. Yes. No, no, that doesn't do anything for me. I kind of liked it, but it was already trademarked, so they couldn't get it. Yeah, Arkansas State is the Red Wolves. Yeah, so, so they couldn't get it. I, Commanders is fine. No? I don't know. Not I think work. everyone just calls them Washington at this point. Yeah, you know? I mean. I, it's the I, simplest thing I to call them. It, and I did this when I was still anchoring the sports every night, and if we showed highlights of their game, they were Washington. I never used the nickname. No. Even, even when they were still using that nickname, I never said that. Okay. I never did that. They just became Washington. So that's, that's still kind of how it goes. Because I got trained with it with UND. Because right. when they had their nickname, right. and even though there was still, it, we we got to a point where the school actually were penning out memos saying, okay, you can use, you can refer to them as UND, University of North Dakota. Uh, they even you know, said the green, you can use that, the white and the green, which I never was going to say that. That just <laughs> sounds asinine. I've never heard the, them be referred to the as air. that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, when they were transitioning from Fighting Sioux to Fighting Hawks, they had a whole memorandum they threw out there. Huh. All right. It is Friday. And you're here, so should we play? Uh, you want to do a little do quiz it. here? Let's I threw this it. one together late, so these aren't uh, top my top okay. of the line ones here. So I won't be as frazzled as I normally am during uh, this part. Well, it depends. If you were, were you listening to the show in the last segment? No, <laughs> I was driving here. <laughs> okay, well. Well, we, actually, I saw I saw one part, the very last like minute of it. Okay, well that may help because we were just talking about that. Um, looks like San Francisco is going to get Super Bowl sixty. Okay. That's the part I saw. All right. So then question one is, oh, no. what city has hosted the most Super Bowls? 
The number is 11. What city has hosted the most? It's a warm weather place. I'll give you. That's all I can give you. Mm, Eleven. Yep. They when was the last one that they had? Oh God. Uh, twenty nineteen. So it wasn't that long ago. It wasn't Tampa, was it? No. Not Tampa. Warm, warm. I'll give you one more guess. Okay. Eastern or Western part? Eastern time zone. Atlanta. No. Miami. Oh. Miami had eleven. Okay. New Orleans had 10. Tampa's had five. Atlanta's had three. Okay. L.A. next with eight. I was going to say L.A. was going to be my first guess. Miami hosted. It was uh, Mahomes' first Super Bowl when Kansas City beat San Francisco a couple years ago. Um, I don't know if you saw last night the Panthers beat the Hurricanes in four overtimes, nearly five, right? Yep. So Family I know... group chat was crazy this morning. Was it? Yeah, we, we have family down in Raleigh. They tried staying up, but didn't make it. Uh, so your family's big Hurricane fans? Yeah. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Did not know that. Well, like my cousins. Are. Okay. Yeah. So I know you're a big Washington Capitals fan. Mm-hmm. Do you know the longest game in Capitals history? The, how many overtimes? The longest game in Washington Capitals history? I feel like four is like. Not- you got four is correct. It is four. Oh. Do you want to know against who? Could you guess against who? It's a playoff rival of the Capitals. Playoff rival. The Rangers? I'll give you one more guess. Who they play all the time in the playoffs. (laughs) I'm trying to think back to when they were in the playoffs. (laughs) Who was the team that always beat them? A lot of teams. (laughs) Pittsburgh. I was going to say, well, you didn't penguins. let me say it. The I was penguins. literally about yes. to say it. <laughs> the penguins. I was just about yes. to say it. April 24th, 1996. I don't like the Penguins at all. Pittsburgh 3, Washington 2. Them and the Rangers are the two teams I cannot get behind. 79 minutes, 15 seconds of overtime. How long would you stay at a game? Would you stay the whole way? If, if I'm you there, If you yeah. went to the game. If I'm but there, But you had yes. to work the next day. Yes. You wouldn't have left. No, if I'm there, I'm there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not staying. leaving either. I saw some videos this morning of people literally sleeping yes. in the stands. Yeah, we, we had video of it. And the PA the announcer was like, we're heading into the fourth <laughs> overtime. I'm so, so sorry, everyone. Yes. Yeah. My, my family was like, they did they made it to middle of the second, and they were I, done. I went to a 18-inning baseball game. Not left. My friends left. They left I, me. Okay, baseball's a different story. I probably would leave. You would leave? Yeah. That's a long what? time. No way. Baseball's a long game, too. Nine innings can be, what, two hours, uh, two and a half, three hours? Well, last, well, not anymore, last night we played three hours up at Newman. It was, felt like was seven. Three hours. Felt like seven. My night. hands were literally purple. I was like, <laughs> I literally texted or said in because now I can talk back to the truck. Yeah. I said, if this goes to extra innings, someone's gonna have to bring me a blanket <laughs> or something. It is so cold. I I have my buddies actually leave me in the fifteenth inning. I, 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 don't had a, blame I, had a, I had to take a taxi back to our hotel because they like, they took the car. That's kind of mean though. They all just left. I wasn't stayed. leaving. Well, what game was it? It was the we were watching Philadelphia and the Nationals. Actually, I was, was in, I was in Philly. Playoff? Game? No, it was a game in yeah. July. Well, this is a playoff <laughs> game. I would stay for this. If you paid to go, you stay. I wasn't leaving. I paid to go. I was. But you're a big baseball leaving. fan, so yeah, that makes leaving. sense. All right. Speaking of baseball, this one, you have no idea. If you get this one, no, I'm, I... you get free. You you won't do it. We won't do this for like a month. Who I like le- doing this. Who leads the Nationals in home runs this year? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I can't even name, like, a single person on that team. I, saw I, it, I had no I idea But I did either. see that they beat the Mets earlier they this They did. Week. They took two of three from the Mets. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, my, I, I I can't even I, guess. I couldn't, pick, I couldn't even pick this guy I'm not even. I know, up. like, maybe two people, and they're probably, like, on the pitching. Yeah, no, I don't know. Lane Thomas? Who? Yeah, he's the right fielder. He's at five home runs this I season. I didn't even know there's a person named that on the Nationals. <laughs> I don't. I really do not pay attention to them. They're terrible. But they beat the Mets, so it's all that matters. You want to know who leads them and wins? Like, there's the, the top pitcher? Yeah. Would you know who that would be? No. Josiah Gray, he's won three, three and five. I know Pat Corbin because he's from my neck of the woods. I do know he's him. He's two and five. He's not very good. That's who, it? who is very good <laughs> on the Nationals? That was a tough one. I, like I said, if you got that one, I was we were done. Lane what? Lane Thomas. Lane Thomas. Couldn't pick him out of a two-man lineup next to me. I have no idea who he is. So. I, I seriously don't know yeah. anything about the Nationals this season. Other than they're not very good. They're not great. Yeah. All right, you go warm up. Thanks for uh, coming by. We'll see you tonight. Thanks for having me. Logan Campbell joins us each and every Friday. We'll come back. We'll wrap the show and the week. Hot Mike. Back after this on WDAY Extra.
we got to show this again. If you missed it earlier, of PGA golfer Tom Kim, who got covered in mud yesterday. I have to read this quote he told ESPN. He said, it was just in the mud over there, and if I was able to find it and I had a good enough lie, I was thinking I could chip it over. He says, as soon as I went in, it was kind of a, it was kind of sketch. But, I mean, it's a major championship. I'm fighting for every single stroke I have. He t- <laughs> says, then it got dark. Once my foot got in, I was like, well, there's no looking back. I went full in, and it got my shirt and everything. There was one point where I just sunk in. I was steady for a minute. I couldn't get my foot out. He actually asked his caddy. To come help says, well, if I go in and sink, both of us aren't getting out. He had to literally crawl, as you can see, out of the mud without his golf ball. And there he is covered in <laughs> my dad. Uh, hopefully next time we have him, I will tell him the story of uh, when I played. Gosh, I was a teenager and lost. I swear I hit a golf ball uh, along the edge of a tree line. It was a tee shot. And I will swear Anybody, I, a fox literally came out of the woods, grabbed the golf ball, and left. I was playing by myself. It was like a Friday night, six o'clock, you know, dusk. I'm I'm not making this. Literally, the fox came out, grabbed the golf ball, ran out. Never got covered in mud. That's just a great, that is a great story. I can't get enough of that. Let's get you ready for what to watch before we get out of here on this Friday. We mentioned we've got baseball tonight on Extra. Bison Jackrabbits, 6.30. First pitch on WDAY Extra. Logan will be there, myself, David Ernst, our whole cast and crew, which should be a great night for baseball. Looks like the weather's going to get uh, a little bit warmer tonight as well. We'll look forward to bringing game two of that set coming up uh, tonight at 6.30. Mentioned Twins and Angels coming up 8.30 tonight on Bally Sports North. Joe Ryan goes for the Twins tonight as they look to open up a series win. Shohei Otani pitches for the Angels on Sunday. So the Twins are not going to get away without seeing Otani at least once. That comes up on Sunday. It'll be Reed Detmers going for the Angels. I couldn't pick him out of a two-man lineup either. 0-3 on the season, an ERA of near five. Twins uh, may be able to get this one if they uh, get the bats going. Again, they're going to make some changes to the uh, to the roster as well with the guys they have hurt. And we mentioned, of course, the PGA Championship television coverage begins at noon on ESPN. That's right when Tom Hoagie will tee off. I can't guarantee that Hoagie will be on television, but um, he'll be playing as he's already moved up 11 spots. He hasn't hit a golf ball, and he's moved up 11 shots or spots. We got to roll. Thanks to our guest today, to Drew Traft and Alec Lewis, Dylan Geyser, and Logan Campbell. If you missed any of our show, you can podcast it later today at Inforum.com. Have a great weekend, everybody. Get out there and enjoy the nice weather. We'll see you back here on Monday to recap everything on Hot Mike on WDAY Extra, Inforum.com, KSFL-TV, and Sioux Falls Live.
Precisely. On a Y-50. Mr. Shioma wants what you owe him. And he wants it soon. By me. This doesn't change anything. To report two murders. Damn. You can find the bodies in the Makua KL Forest Reserve. How do you know this? Because I put them there. 24 months. 